with your friendly neighborhood political correspondent. Here we are at the end of summer, and like many of you, I'm sure, I've got some pretty great 2023 summer memories involving the Yuba River. Today's guest is all about the Yuba River. Maddie Davis is the Community Engagement Manager at the South Yuba River Citizens League, Circle for short, and she's here to discuss the river that runs through it, it being Nevada County. Hi, Maddie. Welcome. Uh, did you make it to the river this summer? Hi, Mary Jane. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, absolutely. I always make a point of getting down to one of my favorite swimming holes at Highway 49 crossing. And it's been really busy in the last couple of years, but still a wonderful swim. Yeah, it's totally busy. Um, so like I was telling you before, this program has its roots in providing information to Nevada County voters, which means I'm going to focus a bit on uh, the politics of the river. Um, but first, I'm going to ask you to discuss what Circle does. Um, at the end of the program, I'll give you an opportunity to let viewers and listeners know how they can get involved. Um, so let's dive in. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so tell me a little bit more about Circle and its work. Yes, absolutely. So Circle's mission is to unite and protect the uh, community, or sorry about that, to um, unite the community to protect and restore the Yuba River watershed. So that includes a lot of different work, including um, river monitoring, uh, science advocacy, um, general policy advocacy for water rights, and of course, um, education for students um, of all ages, the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, and uh, many volunteer opportunities throughout the year to help out the river. Cool, so tell me more about the policy advocacy that you do. Um, to whom do you generally advocate? Certainly, yes. We are hoping to continue uh, engaging an even wider audience, but right now our focus is really on Nevada County residents and um, you know, folks who are river lovers, folks who, who are hoping to make sure that this space stays um, protected, clean, healthy, and happy as long as possible. And you see kind of government as kind of partners in that, that effort or people that uh, like public entities? Oh, certainly, yes. Yeah, we're turning to the community to help us take on these actions, but absolutely addressing um, our actions to government officials locally, um, statewide and federally as well. Gotcha, okay. Um, so how are you guys funded? Um, and have you, um, like how do you continue to be funded? Yeah, we're funded um, significantly by grants, absolutely. Um, some of those are state or federal, federal grants, but um, some are from the county as well. And of course, uh, individual organizations and individual contributors too. So we have uh, quite a diverse array of funding and I'm very grateful for all that that's enabled us to have happen. And um, we apply, apply pretty annually for new grants, so it, it varies year to year as well. Gotcha. So um, recently there was a Board of Supervisors resolution. Um, will you please tell me a little bit about that and whether that was related to funding? Certainly, yeah. This resolution was uh, in recognition of um, the Uber River Cleanup and the River Ambassador Program. And uh, the county and the Board of Supervisors funded uh, the River Ambassador Program through the Visitor Safety fund. Um, these funds have helped the um, River Ambassador Program really grow and sustain our reach. Um, and that program is at the river uh, two crossings uh, regularly and occasionally three or four um, for 15 weeks throughout the summer. And that's where we're really going out, hoping to provide that one-on-one -on -one education to river visitors, local and visitors, about um, you know, how to stay safe at the river, how to keep the river clean, and uh, how to be advocates for the watershed as well. Um, so that funding was um, granted also to help enable us to uh, have, you know, additional signage and, and help um, make the, the program more robust. Gotcha, okay, which crossings are those where people can find you? Yeah, um, we're at Bridgeport, Highway 49, and occasionally Purden and Edwards Crossing. And so if we were to encounter a River Ambassador team, how would you recommend we proceed? Just honestly say hi and engage them in any way that you might um, see someone with a, a public education booth. We had um, fun bandanas throughout the summer and we just finished up our, our season this year, but I'm um, really excited to get back at it again next year. And Circle is also at a lot of um, community events. So we'll be at um, any upcoming street fairs in Nevada City or Grass Valley and uh, always kind of giving out that information about um, how you can help the Yuba. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that the funding that the Board of Supervisors was involved with was the um, Visitor Safety Fund. Um, so that seems like a really, the Yuba River is such a visited place here. So that seems like a really important fund. Um, are, has it been around a while? 
You know, I'm not entirely sure about the history of the fund, but uh, you're absolutely right. It's absolutely an essential um, fund, and I'm, I'm so glad that the county has been prioritizing um, distributing that funding. Circle isn't the only recipient of the funds. I know that um, other organizations uh, locally have received it. Uh, I believe Barriable Land Trust may also um, have received some funds too, and uh, all of these projects really have been going hand in hand to develop recreation and make sure that um, it's it's as uh, kind of holistic to the needs of the county as possible. So um, we also are participating in a mile marker project uh, with the county to make sure that um, the South Yuba River Trail has um, quarter mile markers al along the whole trail. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's going to be really great while out there hiking. And sometimes I have no idea how far I went. Definitely, um, me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, uh, so, so people are visiting, um, and, and they, the Yuba River is a huge draw for the community. Uh, you're going to help keep them safe, which is great. Um, so, what about what about in the other direction? Um, what kind of impacts do the visitors have on the river? Yes, absolutely. We've been reporting out that we've been seeing about 800,000 visitors at least over the last couple of years since wow. the pandemic um, wow. and in some at some places even more um, it it's really uh, grown quite a lot in the last few years and mm -hmm. while that's wonderful and I, I hope that people are enjoying their time out there there also is that human impact uh, on the environment you know some trash gets left behind not everyone may have the same experience uh, with outdoor education that you know like some people may have so that's part of our work here is to really um, to be our be the best steward that we can be of the river by sharing this information and making it as uh, fun and accessible as possible too. So, um, with that increased people uh, usage of the river, there's also you know more pets at the river, so more dog waste, um, potential for E. coli that could get into the water, and um, potentially harmful uh, chemicals or bacteria from sunscreen. Uh, a couple of different other effects as well that, that could happen on the river, but we've been addressing those through messaging and uh, through river monitoring testing to make sure that the water is still at a healthy level. Hmm. So what are some steps that the community visiting the river can take to lessen their impact on the river? Great question. Um, the community can uh, you know, leave no trace. That's our one of our biggest principles that we share out at our booths, um, and that means you know, leaving um, less of an impact than you may have even seen when you went in. Uh, if you are going in and um, are taking any trash with you, of course, packing that out. But maybe if you see any along the way, taking that out too. Um, not bringing any glass to the river too is really helpful. That makes sure that uh, animals and people stay safe from getting uh, broken glass. And then um, not starting any wildfires and not smoking. Um, out in the wild or, you know, throwing a cigarette butt. That's a lot of what we clean up at the Yuba River cleanup actually is hundreds of cigarette butts everywhere. Yeah. And um, as we all know, uh, catastrophic wildfire is a, a significant danger in the county now and high priority for us in the river canyons. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, you've collaborated, you've, um, you've gotten this messaging out through different channels and you've collaborated with the Board of Supervisors, you got a resolution. Have you, um, have you had any other opportunities to collaborate with the board or any other government groups in the community? Yes, uh, we have. We've been really honored to be a part of the River Public Safety Cohort. Oh. Um, and that has included some uh, really great partnerships with other um, law enforcement organizations and uh, local nonprofits and just interested uh, parties and community members who um, have a stake in the river and how we can protect it. Um, and we've been able to uh, put out some really proactive messaging as a group about um, the kind of stay out, stay alive messaging that we had at the beginning of the summer. And then um, together, we're always just addressing issues throughout the year related to the river, um, hearing feedback from locals, um, hearing information about how we might be able to further develop recreation and, and make it a, a safer and um, stronger uh, infrastructure in the area as well. Yeah, and that's, that's very cool that uh, you've been um, collaborating countywide on recreation opportunities because I know that they've got a newly beefed up recreation department. Definitely. So it's going to be kind of exciting to see where that heads. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, so now is the chance. Um, how can how can people get involved? How can how can viewers get uh, involved with Circle in your work? Well, there are so many ways, but um, the one I'm most excited about is the cleanup coming up uh, shortly on September 23rd, and that will be from 9 a.m. to noon. Folks can come out at over 30 sites throughout the watershed, um, and that spans a few counties, uh, but a lot in Nevada County as well. And um, you'll be able to pick up supplies, head out to your site, and uh, just enjoy a lot of fun actually kind of tracking the data of the trash that you're cleaning up, maybe come across some cool historic finds that you might not be expecting. And then um, once you've finished cleaning up, you can uh, go out to the party from 12 to 3 p.m. at Pioneer Park and we'll celebrate, have live music and food. And um, yeah, really just, it's kind of the culmination of the whole summer season at the river, kind of at the end of swimming season practically. And it's a great way to just give back to the river that we love and make sure that uh, before the first rains come, the river is as clean as possible. Mm, that makes sense. So people just would show up and clean up or how do they get, how do they, do this. I would love if they would sign up. They can go to uh, yuberiver.org or of course call the Circle office, um, which is 530-265-5961. Okay, so they would sign up and they would choose a site and then they could sign up at that site for each site? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we have a sign up for all of the sites and that offers more information about what to expect about the terrain and uh, exactly what kind of trash they could expect to. Some of the sites are um, not as accessible as others, so I highly recommend you know judging your abilities as best you can. And um, some of the sites may not take three hours too. So expecting like, oh, you know, maybe we even clean up some trash early and that's a wonderful thing mm -hmm. uh, too. That's a great problem to have. Um, so we'll have, you know, games and fun too at the party happening early if you finish up at your site early. Well, so I know you guys work just, in, it doesn't involve just the Yuba River, but the watershed. So are the cleanup sites only along the Yuba River or are there other watershed sites people can go to? We do have other watershed sites that are along trails, yes, and um, near creeks as well. So we have um, some sites at Wolf Creek, Deer Creek. Um, we have a partnership site with Variable Interest this year that's at their um, newly acquired uh, Wildflower Ridge Preserve. Oh, wow. And uh, really excited to work on that with them. And that will actually be a restoration site where we're removing some invasive species. Um, and scotch broom. Yes, yeah, scotch <laughs> broom and, and blackberry bushes too. Oh, oh man. So, bring your gloves. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, bring your gloves. Um, but it's really it's such a fun way, I think, to have a direct impact. And, um, you know, we, as much as I would love to overlook the river while I'm picking up trash, and there are lots of sites that you can do that, b being along the beautiful trails is such a great thing to do too. And yeah. um, believe it or not, you know, streams can really take all of this trash directly into the river as well. And we want to mm -hmm. catch it as soon as we can before it, it gets to the ocean. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, um, if you would like more information about Circle and their efforts to protect the local watershed, head to circle.org or yubariver.org. Um, and if you have any feedback on this piece, please email me at ncnpolitics at gmail.com. It has been my privilege to be with you today. And remember, when it comes to politics, if you're not at the table, you might be on the menu. Uh, thank you for staying informed, Nevada County. And thank you to my, my guest, Maddie Davis. Uh, I'll see you soon with another special guest.